Hey guys, welcome to the channel and today we're going to look at a thought process that is being uh, prevailing around uh, the evangelical watering hole uh, about mutual submission. Are husbands and wives called to submit to each other mutually? Uh, and the text that is in question is found in Ephesians chapter 5. And I had a Q&A at the church uh, last night and this was one of the questions that came in and I think it's very revealing for a lot of different reasons. We're talking today about submission. We're talking where Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22, wives be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. Now many may see this and take it at surface level to mean yes it says exactly what it means. However there are also those who are uh, assuming that this means something of wives don't submit to the husbands unless the husband submits to the wife and so what they are purporting is a type of mutual submission. Uh, here's a few video clips that will help explain uh, what I'm talking about in their thought process. Submission to the way that he lives his life is because he's not for you. Biblical submission is a two-way street. I submit to you willingly because I want to, because I respect you. You also earn my submission. You be the man that Emotional is... Emotional connection. It has to have an attitude of mutual submission running through it. Now, don't miss that. This is super important. Uh, when Ephesians 5 is read, I think that verse gets skipped way too often. It's the one that sets it all up. And it says, and further, further submit to one another. Now he's talking about marriage. By the way, if you're single, you should only marry somebody you want to be in mutual submission with. But he says, and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. If I love the Lord, then I want to submit to Pam. If Pam so as you can see, the first video where the women are sitting around and then all of a sudden they bring up, you know, well, the Bible even says this, you know, submit yourselves to each other. What they've done is if you look at Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse, uh, actually, if you go up to 5 verse 1, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 through 21 is talking about inside the church, how are Christians supposed to interact with one another? It's one another's. And at the end, it says towards the end where we get into verse 18, it says, But be filled with the Spirit, in verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. This is talking within the confines of the church. The, the church is supposed to, the people within the church are supposed to serve each other. Uh, that is a humbleness that they are supposed to have. The people within the church serve each other. But then Paul makes a switch from talking about the church in general to talking about the role and the order that God has established all the way back in Genesis between a husband and a wife. And that's where he jumps into verse 22, where it says, wives be subject to your own husbands. And as these videos have discussed, it, it makes it appear as though the husband must also submit to the wife. And then the wife responds its submission to the wife's submission. And then there's a, the husband's submission. And then there's a mutual submission that should be happening between the husband and the wife. Well, that's not what the Bible says. And I know some people might contest this, but hear me out here. Uh, if this was the only section in the scriptures that talks about this, then I could see a pretty strong case potentially. Uh, I think contextually it's not there, but I could see someone who was trying to adhere to the Word of God. They would see this and they would read from 21. They would understand that 21 and they would try and read into verse 22 where it goes from the general to the particular and say, see, it therefore Husbands are supposed to be uh, submitting to the wives because they're also brothers and sisters in Christ. Therefore, they're supposed to submit to each other. Well, in Titus chapter 2, verse 5, Paul gives specific instructions for the women. It says, To be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God may not be slandered. Now, the word submission, and that one lady does get this part right, it is a way of one individual relinquishing their rights to subject oneself to. It's an active form of the will, uh, of an individual voluntarily responding to God's will and God's command and submitting themselves to God's command, which in this case, though, is the wife submitting to God's command to submit herself to her husband. Uh, it's giving up your independent rights to the other believer uh, in general in verse 21, and then in particular, it goes to giving up submission and subjecting yourself to that person who has been ordained in authority over you, particularly in this case, a wife's husband. Now, this is not a command that women must subject themselves and submit themselves to all men. It's only to their husband. And the husband, though, is also given instruction on how they are to lead their wife. 
Later on in that section, it talks about that the husband is to love their wife as they love their own body, and that the way in which a husband loves his wife and purifies by the way he loves, he doesn't defile the covenant the same way in which Christ purified the church. This is found in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23 and 25, where we see that he sanctified the church. He gave up his life for the church. So too, the husband does serve the family, but the husband does not submit to the will of his wife. Now, the husband should absolutely take up consideration and advice from the wife. Uh, there's nothing that states that they cannot, but the what is being stated here is that the wife submits to the husband. There are six spheres where Christians are called to be submissive. Um, the six spheres in which God has given or, and ordained authority requiring submission. The first one is obviously we must give submission to God. That's found in James chapter 4, verse 7. The second sphere is submission to the government leaders. We see that in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 7, and in 1 Peter 2, 13 through 14. The third sphere is submission to church leaders. Hebrews 13, 7, 1 Peter 5, 5, 1 Corinthians 16, 15 through 16. That's the third sphere. The fourth sphere is submission of wives to the husbands. And also Paul gives a qualification that children are submit to their parents, Ephesians 5, 22, and also through 6, verse 4. And then the sixth submission is the mutual submission within the body of Christ, Ephesians 5, 21. See, if you want to talk about mutual submission and you have to, uh, and you're trying to make the case that 522 in Ephesians is discussing husbands and wives are mutually submitting themselves to each other, then logically you must continue to say that parents must mutually submit themselves to their children. And that's not the distinction. We see that God has created a specific order. He has given gender roles distinctly to men and women and man was created first. Paul talks about this later on in which he appeals to the order of creation in his support. Paul's not a misogynist, Paul's not patriarchal, nor am I, but what we are looking at is what is it that the Bible says and what does it mean? Because all of those videos that you just saw, that is talking about mutual submission and they are reading verse 21 and they are assuming that verse 21, talking to the church in general, is also talking to wives and husbands submitting themselves mutually to each other, but that is not what is at stake here. Now this is increasingly becoming prevalent because Never in church history was this ever interpreted this way, but it wasn't until the feminist movement era began that this interpretation all of a sudden magically popped into existence. And so this is very revealing here on the feminist agenda and how it has influenced churches and how it's influenced individuals. And clearly from these videos too, it is a bad, poor, false doctrine that is being purported around that I think we need to look at biblically and assess what is it that Paul's actually saying here in Ephesians 5. And does this principle check out in other sections of Scripture, which it in fact does? And now I, I just think this is important for us to understand because there is several other passages in Scripture that defined the distinctions between the two genders and the gender-based roles in the home and in the church. I'll have that in the notes. But the biggest thing that you have to understand is what Paul is describing here in Ephesians 5, 21 to 22 is not a mutual submission. The wife is supposed to subject herself voluntarily, independent on how she feels about this, because her desire to obey God's commands far exceeds her own desires for her own desires. Her, her desires for God and to, to pursue holiness far exceeds her desires for her own selfish intentions. And I think that is a very difficult thing for a lot of women when the husband is not following what he is supposed to be following and loving his wife but that still doesn't negate the command that the wife should subject herself to the husband. Now, this type of submission and the type of leading that the husband does is not a domineering. It's not a lording over. Jesus talks about this in Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, it says, In calling them to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But this is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall become your servant. So what Jesus is telling us here is that men, rulers, authorities, and this applies to all of this different six different spheres of submission, but specifically within the submissive sphere of the house, of the wife and the husband, is that the husband is not to lord his ruling over his wife. He is not a dictator. He is not forcing her to do everything, but she is supposed to listen to her husband. She can give advice. She can give counsel to the women, but ultimately the husband is the head of the family. Uh, hopefully this distinction helps. Hopefully this makes sense. And uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, people that go into this uh, assuming what it means because they've heard some of these other individuals teach this way. But when you actually look at the text, that's not what is being described here. 
Uh, this first section is referring to the church. This section is referring specifically to the gender roles and the authority that God has given to husbands and wife. Now, lastly, I will say this just as a way of closing here, is that a husband who is leading his wife, loving his wife, is doing his biblical command. A woman is not allowed, nor should she submit herself or subject herself to the husband when the husband is telling her to do something that God forbids or she is forbidding or he is forbidding her to do something that God commands. A wife does not have to submit to her husband if the husband is telling her to do something that God forbids or is forbidding her to do something that God commands. See, ultimately she answers to God and must give an account to God for her own life and for her own actions and for her own obedience to God's word. And if the husband is violating that by telling her to do something that he forbids or forbidding her to do something that God commands, uh, she is not needing to submit, just like Christians do not need to submit to the government if they are violating the same exact thing. So hopefully this helps, makes sense. Let me know if you got any questions. Shoot me an email, drop a like, subscribe, and uh, catch you guys on the next one.